Jeremy, I belong to a group of guys who take a dime to beat a fella down. And little Megan, she's not made of money, but lucky for her, I got a soft spot. We start the movie, at least chronologically, we start it with him as Wade Wilson, as a mercenary for hire. And that's why we do it, but mostly the money. Who does not have superpowers, and then he gets terminal cancer. Wade is diagnosed with cancer at a time in his life where he's trying to become a better man, and he's found love in his life in Vanessa. He runs out of options and turns to Ajax to heal himself. Please don't make the super suit green or animated and ultimately comes out on the other end, a broken man with a scarred face and this unbelievable power of being able to regenerate and basically be immortal. We established Wade Wilson as quite congruent with the comic canon as well, which is that he's a bit of a douchebag. Oral fixation? Just a big Stallone fan. He's also a guy that is incredibly physically capable. Donesta, Francesca! He is an overgrown child. He is a romantic. He's a motor mouth. I don't take the shits, I just disturb them. He is a lunatic. You combine all those things and you've got a pretty interesting character to draw from. He's the kind of guy you kind of want to punch in the face a couple times. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> that too. And then maybe have sex with him. It's really the humor. He's just so crazy. That's what people respond to most. Oh! And that's why Regina rhymes with fun. Because the movie is an origin story, we always thought we have to kind of address how did he get named Deadpool. All he needed now is a suit and a nickname, like Wade the Wisecracker or Scare Devil. A Deadpool is a betting pool on to see who is going to die first. And so in Sister Margaret's, they all bet on individuals who they think are going to die first, and they're sitting around the bar. And he's this broken man who now has all these powers, and he's looking for a name. I put all my money on you, and now I just realize I'm never going to win the uh... Deadpool. Captain Deadpool. One of the traditions of Deadpool from the comics is that he kind of exists in his own meta-narrative where he's aware of the fact that he is in the comic, that he comments on the fact that he's in the comic. You ever see 127 hours? Spoiler alert. Because of that, it makes him a little bit dangerous. He can say or do anything in that world. It's actually given us a great freedom to be able to tell a story in a totally unorthodox way. It's a big house. It's funny that I only ever see two of you. It's almost like... The studio couldn't afford another X-Men. It's one of those moments in the film that is breaking the fourth wall, exposing the process of making movies to the audience. It's pretty radical and something that the audience loves. So he can call upon Ryan Reynolds if he wants. He can talk about Hugh Jackman. He's got a nice pair of smooth criminals down under. He can talk about any kind of person that orbits that X-Men universe. And I think it's fun. Finish fucking her the fuck up! Language, please! Suck a cock! So we really pushed it pretty far and where we could kind of take the piss out of people because that's really who Deadpool is. There are different reasons for all the characters. There's some that were choices of the writers and I and Ryan, and some that were choices because they're part of canon. I've played a lot of roles. Damsel in Distress ain't one of them. Vanessa is played by Miranda Bakarin, and she's brilliant and sexy and dangerous and broken, much like Wade is broken. Something like 400 people auditioned for that role, and she just embodied it better than anyone we'd seen right from the get-go. She just kind of had that attitude and that confidence. When Morena came in, it was one of those things where you just can instantly could feel the chemistry between the two of them. And not only was it sexual chemistry, but there was actually comedic chemistry as well. I'm 6'2". <laughs> I'm 6'2". You're freakishly tall. No, you're 5'8", I think. Really? You have a 5'8 face. Okay. We really didn't want to write her in that typical kind of femme fatale sort of way. We wanted to have her be somebody who totally owns her space and her character and somebody who isn't that damsel in distress at any moment in the movie. Yeah. Say the magic words, fat Gandalf. I'm sorry. Read through the nuts. Vanessa is a very witty, very sharp survivor. She comes from a pretty tough background, as Wade does, and I think their relationship is really founded on their mutual difficulties in the past. Ever had a cigarette put out on your skin? Where else do you put one out? I lost my life. <laughs> Vanessa and Wade meet in a bar. It's literally a girl walks into a bar moment. She's loving the fact that he's so funny and charismatic and can go right there with her and not be afraid of who she is and what she's saying. They don't love each other despite their flaws, they love each other because of their flaws. And we feel like they're a really, really good match, those two. Will you, um, stick it? Marry me? 
Where were you hiding that? Nowhere. Vanessa Carlisle, who's also a copycat, a mutant, is also part of canon. We didn't want to make up a new person, but we also didn't want to bog down the story with dealing with her powers. We'll save that for another time, hopefully. Here, this is Vanessa. What? Oh, no, wait, it's Francis. He wants you to come to him. What is that? That's the shit emoji. You know, it's the turd with the smiling face and the eyes. I thought it was chocolate yogurt for so long. Weasel being his best friend is TJ Miller. That's part of canon, it's in there, and there was a really natural place to put that into the script. He's an arms dealer, and he also owns the bar Sister Margaret's School for Wayward Girls, where Wade frequents and is a mercenary bar that's kind of underground and only mercenaries know about it. He is looking out for number Just one, loves money, and guns. Drinks on me, soldiers of fortune! Domestic. Nothing important. He's a foil for Deadpool. Deadpool just wreaks havoc on anybody in his orbit. And Weasel's one of those guys. I'm very excited about Weasel because of TJ Miller. He's just such an awesome fit as Weasel. TJ Miller is one of the funniest people on the planet. And he is a fountain of great ideas and great lines. So when you bring him onto a set, he will, in 10 different takes, give you 10 different funny lines right off the top of his head. You are hard to look at. You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. Not gently, like he was hate-fucking. You look like Freddy Krueger face-fucked a topographical map of Utah. You look like the inside of other people's assholes. You will die alone. That'll do. We don't have two takes that match in this whole film, which is incredible. One of the great sadnesses is that we can't include all of them. I'm doing shirt, no pants, with a mustard stain on the shirt, toddler style. I got to improvise a lot. And the writers, Rhett and Paul, they had ideas. And Brian is very funny. So yeah, it was pretty fun. And actually, found out later that all the peanuts were free. So I was eating a lot of the bar peanuts. And I thought I'd have to pay for them at some point. You know, I, I got money. I did Yogi Bear 3D. But the peanuts were all free. So I wish I had eaten more. Salsa water and lemon for blood. Or wear red. Don't ask. And then there's Blind Al, who's his blind roommate, elderly roommate, who he lives with and abuses. And she also dishes it right back to him as well. So they have this kind of really sick, tormented, love-hate relationship throughout the film. Screw please. Here? No? Just kidding. I know it's been decades. You'd be surprised. She had to be blind because of the way he felt about his appearance. He would not live with somebody who could look at him all the time. And that was really critical to the character. Blind Now was played by Leslie Uggams, who is a phenomenal actress and singer and Broadway performer. And it was amazing how much she committed to playing this really kind of insane character. God, I miss cocaine. She's old. But she's feisty. Hey, hey, careful Whoa. with that Ronnie Millsap. We're downrange. She's got a lot of oomph. And she doesn't let her blindness stop her from doing things. It's like Abbott and Costello, <laughs> you know, their relationship. They're perfect together. Hashtag drive by. She can't see him, but she seems to know who he is better than just about anybody in the whole film. And she has no compunctions of really just sticking a dagger inside him emotionally. Go. Oh. Down, 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 down. Fuck you. I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. Dad? And then you have characters like Colossus, who is in the X-Men world. He's a perfect straight man, which is why the writers chose him originally. Colossus is sort of the Jiminy Cricket of the movie. He's the conscience that is on Wade's shoulder. It was very important for Tim to have an accurate portrayal of Colossus and to play him as Russian, which is one of his signature characteristics from the comics. I've given Deadpool every chance to join us, but he'd rather act like a child. A heavily armed child. He's got a little bit of difficulty with the English language, which is fun. My chrome penis friend back there has agreed to do me this solid. In exchange, I said that I would consider joining his boy band. It's not boy band. Colossus is the goody two-shoes. He's the defender of the universe and all that is good in the universe. And when Deadpool comes in and creates waves, Colossus wants to stop that. You'll recover, Wade. You always do. The relationship between Colossus and Nega, Sonic Teenage Warhead, is like a waiter and his trainee. Colossus is teaching NTW the ropes, and she's this typical teenager who's just so unhappy to be here. Can we go? Look! 
I'm a teenage girl. I'd rather be anywhere than here. Teenage girls tend to be too cool for school, and so we thought it would be really fun to make Negasonic Teenage Warhead super cool and unimpressed by anyone and anything. And that bothers Deadpool. It gets under his skin, the fact that he can't impress her, A, that he can't make her laugh, B, and that she's just not tolerant of his BS. Ripley from Alien 3. Fuck, you're old. <laughs> ah! Fake laugh, hiding real pain. Brianna's deadpan delivery is just amazing. It's so funny and it plays perfectly off the manic energy of Ryan. So the contrast between the two of them, I think, makes for really, really funny scenes. Oh no, finish your tweet. She gets out all of her angst by running and exploding at things. <laughs> oh, I so pity the dude who pressures her into prom sex. We tweaked her powers a little bit. In the comics, she can see the future, I think, three days ahead, and she's sort of a disturbed youth. We tweaked her power so she actually explodes like a human warhead, and we had to ask permission from Marvel to do that, which they were gracious and allowed us to do that. When we meet them, they're actually in the X-Mansion, and you realize that Colossus has sort of been trying to convince him to join the X-Men, and Deadpool not only has no interest in joining the X-Men, but takes great pleasure in telling and Colossus, all the reasons why they're ridiculous and kind of embarrassing. Look, Colossus, I don't have time for the goody two-shoes bullshit right now. And then Deadpool comes to try to recruit them to help him get Vanessa back from Ajax. Wayne Wilson! What's my name? Ooh, I'm gonna fucking spell it out for you. Ajax is a bad guy of the movie. He's the brains behind the operation. He's lost all his nerve endings, so he doesn't feel, and he's trying to create super slaves. You still think we're making you a superhero? Your secret, mate, this workshop doesn't make superheroes. We make super slaves. What the fuck is wrong with you? He himself went through this same process at one point. They took any good that was left in him and they beat it out of him through this torture process. The way that I've approached Ajax has always been more to do with an absence of conscience rather than he's inherently evil, rather than there's anything bad about him. He really took this role incredibly seriously. What's amazing about him, he's actually one of the sweetest, nicest guys you'll ever meet, but as soon as he gets on screen, he is a terrifying dude. Hey, you grow back body parts now, Wade. When I'm finished, parts will have to grow back here. He's been such a fun character to play. He really has, and I live my life very positive and peaceful, and it's been great fun being the absolute opposite as Ajax. Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Angel Dust we added because I wanted somebody who was visually spectacular, and I simply wanted a strong female presence in the film. We needed an opponent for Colossus, and I thought she had the right power set, and she was a cool character, so we rolled her in there. Aren't you a little strong for a lady? I'm calling Wang. She kind of gets picked up by Ajax, and he teaches her how to live, how to function, and he becomes just basically everything to her. Gina brings this really unique physicality to the role and menace, and is a really formidable adversary for our intrepid crew. Gina Carano is badass. Her eyes are so piercing and direct and strong. Interestingly, in real life, Gina is very delicate and shy, not at all like the persona that you see in the movie. <laughs> We have a great cameo from Stan Lee in, in our film, and I guarantee you it is at a location that he would never be at in any other Marvel film ever. Coming onto our stage right now, give it up for chastity. I think he had more fun than just about anybody you could possibly imagine that day. When I did my scene, and Tim Miller directed it. I didn't even know I was working. That's how effortlessly he makes it seem. This is going to be very different for the man. This may change my whole career. I think it will. My only problem is, after that, I never did get to see Chastity. I mean, I'm heartbroken. Here I'm yelling to everybody, let's give it up for Chastity. And I, I hope I wasn't lying. I hope she was worth giving it up for. Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, picture wrap on Stan Lee. Everyone, Stan Lee. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody in this film, they went into the movie knowing it was a superhero movie and knowing that it was based in a comic book. A lot of the characters in comics and in superhero movies take themselves very seriously. And Deadpool is 
almost the opposite. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. And so for the actors, it was this opportunity to play, to be mischievous, to be R-rated, to be dirty. Or stay. We could next level this shit. To poke fun at all the things that traditionally these movies take very seriously. So it was just really fun to watch. We should cut. 